everyone, Leanne here from Kingdom Bloggers. So as we wind down 2023 and get ready and look forward to the next year, I want to offer some practical advice and tips to help those of you who are really struggling as far as the writing and what you should be writing about. One of the number one questions or complaints or struggles that I see in many of my Facebook groups is, I just don't know what to write about anymore. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. My brain is fried. I'm just burnt out on thinking of things to write about. Well, that's where your first going wrong happens, okay? Blogging in this context, like what we do here, is not about thinking of things to write about. This type of blogging is doing solid research to figure out what kind of things your target audience is actually going to Google to ask, right? Because Google is a question box, like it's that box, and they, they type a query in there. And so you first have to, of course, figure out who you're trying to reach and for what purpose. So simple example, I want to help Christian men or women, you know, you can pick, uh, learn how to study the Bible better or better understand the Bible. So I want to offer Bible study tips and resources that they can, uh, you know, effectively put into their daily routine and life and get a better outcome from it. So that's pretty simple. I want to help people learn the Bible. Okay. So there's really no thinking involved there. What are the resources or tips or things like that, that I can offer them? Now you can apply the same, what I'm going to show you to any niche, say you're a Christian mom who wants to pour into other Christian moms to offer them spiritual nourishment to the mom themselves, but also tips for, you know, just raising godly children, things like that. Um, Christian men, same thing. So with the how to study the Bible better, some of the questions are still going to be the same. It's just like how you write it, the application will be more geared toward a, toward a man than a woman. But at the end of the day, it comes down to offering things that they are looking for. It's not about your creative thoughts. It's what are they looking for? So for those of you who are getting burnt out and just like, I just don't know what to write about anymore. Stop that. Sit down, identify your who and your what, right? Who are you trying to reach and for what purpose? And then do solid research because once you do that research, you're going to have a list of unending things to write about. There is no thinking involved. Now, when it comes to writing that content, of course, there's a little bit of thought process. Some things are easier than others. And you may have to do a little more research to write some of these things. But let's say for an example, somebody was just looking for a list of Bible verses about something. What does the Bible say about this? That research is pretty simple. Um, now, if you were offering practical tips for doing something, then, you know, you would need help with that. And this is where chat GPT has become really, really helpful. I do not recommend this. Let me repeat. I do not recommend using chat GPT to write your blog post, but I do recommend it for helping you brainstorm ideas for the post that you've already established someone is looking for, okay? So I'm gonna hop over here to the chat GPT and just kind of give you an example of how to get started with this. But also for those of you in the Bible study, learning the Bible, I wanna help people grow stronger in their knowledge of the Bible, some you know actual information that chat GPT is going to get me. So I did a search here. Now you, I'm in chat GPT four, so I pay for it, but I do have the, the free version as well. And for this query, it pretty much gives me the same thing. So you only need the free version. So just start. What are the top 10 struggles? I started with Christian men for Christian men when it comes to reading the Bible. And it gives me these. So Finding time is always number one. Um, and I want to uh, pause here. So I I did some extensive uh, surveys and research on this particular topic. What do you need most? What is your biggest struggle when it comes to studying the Bible? Um, I sent out some surveys to my email list, which is pretty big. I'm also a co-moderator for a Bible study Facebook group and for women and when they join, they have to answer questions. And one of those questions, what are your biggest study? So time, finding time. 
but also I don't know how to study the Bible. So just the idea of studying it, how to do that, that was number two. Okay, so back to this. So time, relevance to modern life, right? A lot of the stuff when you search about Bible stuff on Google, a lot of what comes up, um, I like to term that it's written in Christianese. Okay, so if you have a pastor that teaches or preaches on Sunday and you're like, I, I hear what you're saying, but I don't, right? Like, like I, for me, it's like reading King James Version. I know there's a debate on which, which translation is better. So please don't go there in this video. But when I read KJV, I, I may as well be reading Japanese because I have no idea what I'm reading. Like I can read the words, but they don't sink into my brain and I don't comprehend it. Believe it or not, there are a lot of people out there who don't really know there's other translations that make more sense. Like I was like, doesn't everybody know that there's a lot of translations? Well, apparently not, because that's some information I got in my feedback as well. So if you've been writing in KJV, maybe consider writing using verses in a more modern translation. Now, again, I know there's some divisiveness on the, the newer translations and all that, but think about it. They are written with more modern words, without the hath and the those and the thys. People just don't understand that. So taking it in a modern version, translation, like words we use in this century, and then like, okay, I read the verse, but like, what does that mean? Like, I have no idea. What does that mean for me? So translating this stuff into, you know, Bible for dummies, so to speak, but in real, like, who you're, who you're trying to reach, Christian moms, Christian men, you know, single women, uh, young moms, uh, older season people like men or women, right? How do the verse apply to them in that season? That's what they want to know. That's what we all want to know. Like the Bible's great, but if I don't know what to do with it, why did I read it? Understanding context and history. This is another one people want to know about. Like, you know, when you read some of the verses today, some people are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. You know, when we talk about slavery, we talk about the treatment of women and just cultural things, we need to understand, like when, when a certain passage of scripture says a certain thing, like you need to step back and view it from the bigger picture. I'm like what's going on? That's why I love the, um, those Bibles that have like the extra, the study Bibles, because they add that context into it before you begin reading the chapter. And so breaking down background of a certain passage, like the persons in that passage that are being spoken of or that are speaking, what's going on? Like, how does this apply based on what's going on around? Uh, language and translation, I just mentioned that. That's a big one. Maintaining consistency and discipline, developing a reading plan, a habit, like how can they do that? Dealing with doubts and questions, Applying teaching to personal behavior, overwhelmed by the length and complexity, complexity like breaking it down into smaller chunks. Um, distraction and lack of focus was another one that I got from my feedback. And then feeling disconnected from a community. This is a big one for people who may live in smaller towns, like rural, you know, where maybe there's like a one church town. That church is, you know, what I call the footloose church, very outdated and not up to, you know, some of the newer things that our, our world has become. I'm not saying change in the Bible. It's not what I'm saying, but in how it is taught, the words, the application and things like that, you got to keep up with the times where people just simply lose interest and they just don't understand it. So that feeling of disconnect, this is why online Bible study groups, Facebook groups specifically for the purpose of Bible study are growing. Um, if y'all know Megan from Megan Ellen Ministries, hers, oh my gosh, she gets so many people joining it every, now hers is just for women. So guys, if you want to start a Bible study group on Facebook and you need help, please let me know because I really, we need more men to lead these, but just building that community to where, you know, you can go to church on Sunday, but then what about the rest of the week, right? Or for people, like I said, who don't really have a church that they can connect with. So I did the same query, but I put in Christian women and pretty much many of them were the same, um, but there were a few. So relating to male centric narratives. So what this means is just a lot of the Bible does focus on the male figures, you know, the apostles and things like that. 
there are, and, and a lot of the primary teachings that we tend to hear about in church or just that are mentioned more often tend to be the guys, right? Not that the guys aren't important. Obviously, they're a huge part of the biblical story from, st- from the start until now. But women often have a hard time following it because they're like, well, what about the women? Where, where am I in this picture? And so, you know, maybe offering some short Bible studies on the different women of the Bible, like talk about how these women impacted the biblical history and things like that. Um, Balancing responsibilities, obviously women tend to have more responsibilities in the home, you know, with their children and things like that. And then if they have an outside of the home job as well. So time would be kind of the thing here is balancing the responsibilities of family with balancing time with study. Personal relevance, we mentioned that one, Uh, history, interpreting the teachings on women. Again, that kind of goes back to some of the one in number one here, Uh, maintaining consistency, overcoming stereotypes and misinterpretations and dealing with doubts and questions. So it's just some of the things. And so, okay, you may be wondering, okay, that's all great, but still, what do my people want? What does my audience want? What can I write that's going to fix this problem or help with this? Well, it's pretty simple. You start breaking down each one of these and just going over to Google. And so let's, I did one with just a woman, right? Well, okay, let me get rid of this one. I'll do this one in a minute. So when we go, let's just pick a woman. So I was doing Sarah, just because I'm working on a Sarah Bible study right now. And so Sarah in the Bible. So this drop down, if you have keywords everywhere, this is why I like keywords everywhere, uh, because it gives me search volume in my drop down recommendations. So Sarah in the Bible verses, the meaning, um, and then there's some lesser ones, Sarah in the Bible facts. And then over here, you see five sat facts about Sarah. So these different ways people are searching for information about Sarah. They aren't all going to Google and saying Sarah Bible study, right? So what are they asking about, Sarah? That's where the research comes in. When you are struggling to figure out what to write, it's because you're thinking in a creative writing manner. Go get to the meat and potatoes of what people are looking for when they go to Google as it applies to what your ministry is trying trying to offer. Um, So we have some other things here, Old Testament Bible characters. That's a whole other topic, right? That probably includes Sarah. Um, the story of Sarah and Hagar. Now then these down here have much lesser volume. So these, if you were writing about Sarah, say you were doing five facts about Sarah in the Bible or lessons from the life of Sarah, whatever, you would probably mention God's promise to Sarah. So when you are in these that are like under a hundred, these are usually things that should be included in one of these higher ones. And so any of these would be any, you know, many of these, I wouldn't do five set facts about Sarah and lessons from the life center because I'd probably be competing with each other. But this gives you an idea. Okay, I want to write about women in the Bible, but how do I write it? There's your answer. Start with the basic woman in the Bible. So Sarah, uh, Esther, you know, whomever. Same with the men. If you were doing other Bible characters, same with like, let's say the parables or certain topics, Jonah and the whale. So any of the Bible stories, you can do this. Now, let's go flip flip directions here. Other things people search for in high volume that can help you generate traffic to your site. This may not be what you want to write about, but these are the things people are looking for that can bring them to your site. So they find these other things. It's Bible verses. That is the number one um, Bible type search on the internet, Bible verses about something. Okay. So I'm going to go just because it's going to be January versus about me. I'm just going with this in, made new in Christ. So let's go being made new and you can see being just being made new, made new in Christ. So I'm just going to go with that one and see what other things that pulls up. This was an easy one. This was a simple Bible verses about, and I'll show you what a not simple one looks like. 
So over here, Bible verses about starting a new journey. Okay. Uh, scripture on new season, new stages in life, examples of new beginnings in the Bible. Again, these are things people are looking for. So that is what you should be writing about. There's no creative writing in this. It's literally writing content that answers the question. And so with Bible verses, pretty easy to research that. You do have to add a little, you know, context and information to it, but it's still not a creative writing piece. It's a factual writing piece. It's answering a question or a search query. It's not always a question with a question mark on it, but Okay, so this was like a simple Bible verses. Let's do a not simple Bible verses about love. Now you can see, so the first one I did, there were all the things that dropped down had like 10, 20, 210 was the highest one, right? As you can see on these, it's much, much higher. Now, when we talk about long and short tail keywords, so short tail keyword is Bible verses about love. We don't want to write about that because we want to target long tail keywords. So what is my long tail keyword? It's all of these that are in bold. Bible verse about love and something. You have a much hot, because this is such an extensive search that has so many variations in how people are searching for it. You want to target the long tail version because you have a better chance of answering it because you're going to answer it in the way someone's looking for it. If I'm looking for love and hope, I'm not looking for love and relationships, right? So love and relationships is like 4,400, but I want to see about hope or love and forgiveness, 2,400. And so this enables you to better answer the query based on how the person is looking for it, okay? So some other things that you can do in here in figuring out what your audience wants, Um you could ask it, create a list of 10 Bible study resources I can create to help Christian women with their Bible study efforts. And you can play around with these prompts that you give it, but this is just kind of giving you a general idea. Ask it questions. What are the problems? What are things people are looking for? Create a list of this, right? So number one, theme study guides. Your, your study guide could actually be like the blog post. Um, I am doing this right now with my Women in the Bible series. I have blog posts on my site that are ranking for certain women of the Bible. Each one is a different woman. And then I create a printable study guide that they can with questions and, you know, chat GPT can help you with those questions, of course. Um, and then that's like a download that they get and they can take away. So obviously things I can send to my email list and things like that. Study guides, reading plans, reading plans are huge. You're like a you know, 30 day Bible reading plan where it's like a verse a day or a couple of verses each day, uh, Bible in a year reading plan, things like that. Um, these are huge in January. That's the primary search season, but I create these or I send these out every month and I always get emails. I actually just got one yesterday. It was a Facebook message or uh, message about how they absolutely love these reading plans because it's short tidbits that they can do in like less than 10 minutes each day. And for someone who's super, super busy, it was like very, very helpful, simple things, online Bible study courses. You know, if you have a little more time, you know, doing like a course style where, you know, it takes them through, it's like Bible study, but instead of buying the book, it's like a video course, interactive devotionals uh, that, like I mentioned, the Facebook groups, there's audio that's more like a podcast and some other more um, advanced things like apps and coaching and things like that. So again, come in here, start with some basic prompts to figure out your audience your who and your what, continue asking it things until you get a really solid idea of topics that you then come over here to Google using keywords everywhere and start researching how. That is the most important thing out of everything I just said. You have to figure out how people are searching for the thing that you're going to write about. It's not how you want to write about it. It's not, it's not about you. 
It's about them. And you have to figure out the exact ways they are searching for this topic so that you can begin writing about it. But again, these are not creative writing projects. These are answering the search query, providing enough value. With, this, with these updates that keep happening, the HCU, it's literally called a helpful content update. It wants to make sure that everything that comes up in these search results is helpful. It's helpful because it's answering the questions that people are asking Google. This little box right here. I mean, Bible verse about love, that's not technically a question. It's a query, but we call it a question. And so if you want to grow your traffic, you have to write about things that help people based on the help they are searching for. What are they seeking from Google? Answer those queries. Now, I focus here on this video about Bible study in particular, Christian men, Christian women, new believers, um, seasoned believers. You can take it in any direction, Christian moms, um, but you don't have to do it exclusively Bible study. I will tell you the Bible study content is much easier to rank for because there's a fortunately, unfortunately, less competition in Google's eyes. But even things for, you know, moms with kids, if you're pouring into Christian moms, think about this. Christian moms don't just need the biblical nourishment. Yes, they need that. So, you know, pouring into mom in her season of life. But what else does mom need? She does need a few like tips, like five things to do with your kids, you know, in the summer or whatever. But you know what mom needs? She needs stuff to keep the kids active and busy. And, you know, when mom's trying to clean the house, worksheets, games, printable coloring pages, those types of things. You can do that in the general sense, like just general games, but also Bible games, right? Um, Armor of God for kids, things like that. The printables. Moms need that. The search volume for printables in Bible study for children kind of way and even for adults, but for kids especially is huge. I've literally built an entire website about these printables. So I can tell you from experience, but also from research that it's there. Same thing with prayer. People are looking for, you know, how to pray different ways. There's different methods of prayer, questions they have about prayer. What does the Bible say about prayer? But then also people are just looking for actual prayers about all things. If, you know, they're in a pinch and they're like, I need a prayer for this. And they just, for whatever reason, can't think of it themselves. They'll go to Google and say prayer for a loved one in the hospital. And boom, your prayer could be the one along with some resources, maybe a printable or something that can help them. It's all about the help based on their need, not based on your creative thought process. Okay. So again, start with chat GPT brainstorm some ideas in there, and then take that information, go into Google using keywords everywhere. Now, this gives you some ideas. And then I have other videos about rank math. So as I mentioned um, in the Facebook group, the difference between keywords everywhere and rank math or rank IQ, sorry. Keywords everywhere is for preliminary research, right? Because you can see it right away. And once you buy the credits, they're there. Rank IQ you have to pay and it is a significantly higher, it's like 49 bucks a month. And so you cannot go in there and do research until you've paid for it. But if you're still trying to figure out your who and your what, you're gonna waste most of that first month's credit. And so I would recommend you start here, do this basic research, get a list of really good ideas, then begin using Rank IQ to go in and find the low competition version of that keyword and start writing it from that, okay? So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Um, I know, you know, as we are looking into this new year, I, I'm just seeing in the Facebook group, several people over and over, and not just in my group, I see it in other groups too. It's just like, I just don't know what else to do or the Google, you know, Google got me, Google, or I've been doing this for several years and I still get no traffic. Well, usually the answer to that problem is, you're just writing about stuff. You're not writing about stuff people are looking for. You're writing as a creative writer and that's just not gonna work here. So figure out who and your what, start with chat GPT, brainstorm your ideas, take those ideas that it gives you, plug it into Google with keywords everywhere. And then you'll be able to create a solid content plan to take you into 2024 and hopefully start seeing traffic, seeing growth, building your following, 
um, and truly being able to pour into people spiritually and providing them resources they can actually use. Okay. If you have any questions, y'all know what to do, drop a comment below or hop over to my Facebook group. I would love to help you if you need some more guidance or, you know, some more ideas or whatever, let me know. Um, be sure to like this video and follow us here at Kingdom Bloggers if you're not already. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye.